<laughs> it is Monkey Puzzle, and I am where I left you last at my grinder for the Blazes and the Endermen. We decided that they are indeed Blazes and not just Blaze. And this is episode number 12, playing Minecraft Unabridged on the Primus server. Welcome back. So it's pretty noisy in here. But I just wanted to show you that I had this working pretty well now. And the... let me see. I got all the items being sent straight to the ME network with the armor being filtered out. And that's working fine. And then over here, you didn't see me actually hook this up. But I've got the ender tank now right here. All the stuff comes in this way. The mob essence. And this goes directly into the ME as well, into the extra cells that I just started doing. This drum lives here in order to feed this floodgate for our little pool that we can drink from. One little minor note I wanted to show you guys is that the floodgate had a hard time with block updates. And I would drink and the block wouldn't get replaced. Well, I fixed that by just putting a little redstone clock back here with a, just a simple redstone signal to it, and that suffices as a block update and keeps these updated and refreshed, which keeps me refreshed and my guests <laughs> if they come down here. Anyway, let's get out of this cacophony. I'm going to turn this off for now just to be nice on the server while we do other things. So up here, you can see that blazes are almost at the very blaze rods are almost at the very top of my inventory right here and ender pearls aren't too shabby either i was grinding up a bunch of sand from the whatchamacallit the igneous extruder which is now making obsidian again sending it straight to the pulverizer and i don't need nearly this much right, let me just grab it from here but it is good thing to have for glass and all that kind of stuff and i found out a new use for it actually not sand drum if i take one of these essence drums so you know this is mob essence but it's not liquid xp you can use it in mine factory reloaded stuff but you can't use it for enchanting and stuff like that but over here there's this vat and brink showed us all this if you put sand in an ender io vat and then give it mob essence then if i can grab it here that mob essence as it goes in gets turned into liquid xp at the cost of some sand so that's pretty cool indeed so i can keep this filled it's already full but i just wanted to show you all that so that done now those things are not limited resources i've been using the blaze rods to top off my mana pools here I still have to finish the regulation of that. I did build the lasers and the assembly table and the integration table from BC Silicon, otherwise known as Buildcraft. And I'll get to that later because I'm not having that be ongoing right now because today I want to work on power. Power. I need some power. I, this, I've come back enough times and my little charcoal supply has run out and I have to go harvest more wood before I can access the ME system. The ME system at this point is enough of a draw that this little thing isn't working nearly as well anymore. It was fine when I was just running machines once in a while, nothing 24 seven. If I do run anything 24 seven here, then these also drain that pretty quick. So I need something better. And I kind of mentioned what I was gonna do last episode. I made this compact machine right here and I was going to put that grinder in it, but it turns out that there are always, it's always light in there. And so natural spawners won't work. And so I want to make this a power generation cube. And I think to go along with it, I want a battery cube. So let's make another little compact machine here. And we'll make another one of the maximum size. Let's go ahead and make the world resizing cube first, which... Oh, maybe I've done that. No, I haven't. Okay, but I made a bunch of these ahead of time. 
So we got that. And I've actually got enough of these in here for one more. Next time we want a cube, that will be there. But if we throw this in here now and click it on in, ta -da, we get another one of these. And let's take these two as well. And I wonder if you can name these. That would be interesting. But we'll, nothing in here right now except some of those. Those are some decorative blocks that look like the inside of these. And then let's put one of these right here, say, and one of these right here. Oh, not quite. I'll move it over. Gotta be symmetrical. And then one will be the battery and one will be the power gen. And I'm gonna do this right now. So I think, is it just right click? Yeah, no shift, just right click. Now, both of these, if I pick them up, whatever contents I put in there, won't get destroyed. So the work I'm gonna do won't be destroyed if somehow these accidentally get knocked off the floor. And as far as the battery goes, Brink the Gamer, in our server here he did a great tutorial on the zeta industries batteries so these are a great multi-block thing go anywhere from three by three to five three by three by five to 32 by 32 by 32 and they hold tremendous amounts of power very expensive stuff i'm gonna have to make some test rack frames we'll get into that uh, when we get there today i want to start the power generation going but all the power that we generate will be able to be stored up. And so if we make extra, it won't be a problem. And then all this could trickle charge into there as well. And so we'll have all the power gen go into the battery. So the first thing I got to do is since we're really going to be diving into immersive engineering today is I need to get some farms going. And I'm just going to show you real quick what we're going to do. We're going to make the we're gonna make biodiesel. And so biodiesel is gonna fuel the diesel generator. We're gonna to need to set up the industrial squeezer and the fermenter, and they are big fancy multi-blocks like this. And industrial hemp seeds are the best for making it. So we're gonna do that. You can also harvest oil in the world and make diesel, straight up diesel and gasoline, but then I'll have I'll be having to chase oil wells all over the world and it will be finite. This way, even though it doesn't give the max power as those other fuels, if we look up the generator, which uh, we could go back here to the power and to, oh, there it is, diesel generator. This is a really cool looking thing. It's not shown formed here, but somewhere in here, it shows the burn rates. So these do far better than this, but this will just keep coming in. So the first thing I got to do today is make some farms. And I've already gone ahead and made a couple of these Ender.io farming stations. And I was going to put them here and then, because this will fit my standard 9x9 nine nine farm, but then actually if you put an octatic capacitor in these, you can do 15 by 15 So I'm going to make a bigger space over here. I'm actually going to raise it up one more level and make a, a nice big space. That was still when I thought these were 9x9, nine nine, but nope. We're going to go for the 15x15. 15 15. So we're going to set up some industrial hemp farms and some sugarcane farms, at least. We could also use potatoes because we need, we need the seed oil from the hemp and we need the ethanol that we can process in the fermenter, I believe from the sugar cane. So I just wanted to show you the before on that. I'm going to go ahead and keep going with these and get those farms set up and then we will jump to the next part. Just as far as making those farming stations, they're no big deal except for this one little part of making the Z logic controller. So we need zombie heads, solarium, silicon and redstone. So let me just make a couple more of those on camera with you. We got four zombie heads. <laughs> Might as well just make them all because these are also useful for, let's see, let's find that Z controller again. These can also be used for advanced item filters, which I'm actually using below for the armor. So I could use more of those as well. So anyway, 
Okay, solarium, solarium, silicon, and redstone. So let's just grab that stuff real quick, and then I will cut to the farms having been made, and we will start putting machines, there we go, in one of those blocks. And this may take a couple episodes to put this together, but then after that, we will be set for power, at least pretty well set. Every one of those... Did I get the zombie heads? Yeah. Every one of those diesel generators makes about 4,000 RF of power. So that's pretty good. And if we put multiple of those, we got a 13 by 13 by 13 space in there. I think we can stack a couple sets of all this stuff in there. We'll be doing really well. So I went ahead and made a slice and splice here. And then we could just click these things in. And it's going to do its little thing here. And then jump into the end, we get our Z Logic controller. So I'm going to make uh, three more of those. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit after I've become a farmer up here in the Highlands. See you soon. Well, it's the next day, and I got it going on. Got five farming stations out here. All of them have octatic capacitors right there, and that is actually bigger than it said it was going to be. I thought it was going to be 15 by 15, but these turned out to be 17 by 17, so I am not complaining. Just got a little bit of cactus I'm starting to grow out there just for the dye, but that's not automated. The one thing about these is that I've got it set up so I can put the hose in here, and they keep running out, though, so I'm going to have to set something up where it's automated the automated production of hose but for now every once in a while i just get some and i throw them in here let me take my magnet off because this thing is going to start harvesting like crazy all of a sudden <laughs> you can see it go there so yeah that's just something i still got to do and then uh in here <laughs> i've got some more so we can just fill this up as much as I got on me anyway and hopefully I don't have to worry about it for a minute it doesn't seem like I can go a whole day though so even when I fill this up entirely so I'm gonna have to come up with something but yeah so I got three of them are industrial hemp and two of them are sugar cane and I've just got a little tea under here of conduit power and item ducts uh, and item conduits that is and then they're all being served by this so power is coming from the big reactor downstairs and then things are just being put into the emmy like this have to get the whole thing chunk loaded some stuff's on the ground and yeah that's where i put stuff to go in i could also put bone meal in there to make all this work for this one that's taking everything out, I had to blacklist iron hose and bone meal. And so it won't take those out of the machines. And we can just go ahead and put this in there and that in there. So let's go see how we're doing. Ooh. As far as stuff, as far as hemp seed and sugar cane go. Let's just go in here and check it out. So... These are our top three items now. The hemp fiber, the industrial hemp seeds, we have 22,000 of, and we've got 18,000 sugar cane. So just a little bit behind this, there are only two of these and three of these, but it's not completely out of the proportion. So in this, I can, let me see if I go down into here, I can turn this, oh wait, this X that out. I can turn this, straight into string right there and then of course with that i could do all the things that string can do like make wool and stuff like that so i've got tons of string now or potential string you can use this to make uh, the blades i think on one of the, like the advanced windmills but since i haven't done that i don't really have much other use for it besides string and wool and stuff like that but that's great to have that much of it so now we have these things, it's time to put them to use and get this going 
over here. So one of these is going to be the battery. One of these is going to be power gen. For some reason, it feels like this one should be power gen right here. But we have a few things to make first. We got to squeeze the hemp seeds. So we're going to need to make a squeezer. And that's, we're going to need some of these and some light engineering blocks. So we're going to need these. I'm going to need lots of these all the time. So I'm just going to make a stack for now. See how far that gets us. That's just copper and iron. And then, so I'm going to double up the, uh, the full set of things right now. So I would only need eight of these, but I'm going to make 16 of these. And then we're also going to need the fermenter. And that's this block right here. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make 16 of these and I will possibly make even more of more than this. I just want to at least get it going now, doubling up to start with. And so we're going to need some light uh, engineering blocks like that. That's the recipe for them. So let's go ahead and do that. And then for, so for the squeezer and the fermenter, I'm going to need 76 of these. I'm also going to need 12 more for the distillery. So let's go ahead and make 88. <laughs> so we can go ahead and make one full stack and we can't because we need more of these. So now this time I'll make two stacks of these since we saw it doesn't go that far. And so if I make another stack of these, oh yeah, we could just go ahead and do that. It'd be a little extra, but that will be okay. And then let's go ahead and make the things we're going to need for the distillery. So the light engineering blocks we already made, we're going to need 16 scaffolds, which are like this steel scaffolding. So I'm going to need to make some steel fence. Not sure how much. Let's make that much and see how far that gets us. So I said 16 of these. So that means we got to make 18. And then we're going to need 54 heavy engineering blocks. So these guys, and these use steel. And that is different. That's the steel mechanical component. So let's go ahead and just make a bunch of those because we're going to need these for all kinds of things. I'm sure I'm going to need some more pistons pretty soon too. So let's just make a stack or two of pistons and throw those back in. And then here we go. That is Electrum. I made a bunch of Electrum before this. So 54 of these. So let's just go ahead and make a stack. And I can't. I need more steel already. Okay. I was afraid of that. So I've got some steel in process right now with these metallurgic infusers. And also, I went ahead and made a blast furnace here. A immersive engineering blast furnace. But it is slow, <laughs> very slow. I put a stack of iron blocks in there and a stack of cold coke, but it's taken a long time. So <laughs> yeah, I think these are better in the long run. So let's go ahead. We can do that. And oop, that's still not going to get us there. Ooh, why'd you all go over there? Okay, we could do that. Yeah, so let me catch up with the materials, and then we'll go in there and start making stuff. And I'm sure I'll figure out lots of stuff I need as I go along. I'm going to need to hook the ME system into there. And I think we're going to do power in with Tesseracts from the big reactor for now. But we're going to need power out going to the battery. We could probably just bridge it across right there. Let's see if the battery happens this episode or the next. Probably the next. Let's get some of this cooking. And what else? I'll have to figure out what else needs to go in and out. I'll probably have to mess with fluids and stuff, but I can do that with the ME system. By the way, for the mob essence, I had made two 16K fluid storage, and I figured out that the K, basically each each thousand or maybe a thousand twenty four in these fluid storage things equals about a drum of storage which has 256 buckets so it's 256 buckets times the 16k more or less so i went ahead 
and made a 256k down here, which is 256 drums. And you can see that uh, I've got what, like about 66 drums worth of the 262 or whatever, <laughs> more or less, in here. So it's filling up with mob essence. I actually didn't turn the grinder on right now, but that's fluid storage so far. That this one can actually have five fluid types, so it could actually hold the biodiesel or the hemp seed oil or whatever um, if it needed to. So we'll play with that. While I got you here, I'm going to grab this uh, flux cable I have and grab that nice wand that I traded uh, Landstrider for. And I've been using the equal trade part quite a bit, but I haven't showed you guys that because I've just been doing some stuff. It's always happened off camera. No, I want to get in there. There we go. And now I just got to figure out where I can hook into those guys from down here. So I'm just going to play around with that. See how far I can go without breaking into the outside. So one is like right there. So we can get to that one. And there is the outside. I think I need to widen the support underneath, maybe. And that one, oh, it should be right there. So I didn't need to go that far. So close that up. And then I she probably could get away with this closing this back up. Yeah, and then now we can connect up the ME to these guys like that. And I wonder why it doesn't connect, but I know you can do that. So I'm not going to trip on it yet. And I'm going to need some more cable. Anyway, we'll pick a new controller here and that will be the ME going into these guys. So I'll mess with all that in a bit and I'll see you once I got all my parts made with all my steel. Let me out. There we go. See you soon.